100 billion dollars that's my next target grant cardone i want to win the world-renowned sales expert worth over one billion dollars you gotta know how why what's my why what's my purpose F purpose god damn i just want something if someone has let's say a fairly small business what would your tangible advice be to help them scale that up this is a trick okay it's magic i'm telling you. and it works i'm like i'm writing down how do people know the difference between a fake guru and the real deal? Dude, great question. The one way to find out is to simply say, Do you ever get accused of being one of those guys? Oh, 100%. He's greedy. I am greedy. Oh, you target people. I fucking do target people. I target young people. I target blacks, browns. How much cash do you keep then? As of this morning, see, this is transparency. That's today. Whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> is he allowed to read it out? I'm never satisfied. I have divine discontentment. Is there a level of insecurity? Like, f you. You, you, you. You're judging. Well, let me ask but you. You don't know what I have. You don't know what you're talking about. Now, I would never hire him because he can't even listen. He's like, hey, uh, why, yo, why yo, can't yo, I yo, listen? Yo, 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 yo. Because I'm telling you what to do. But all of your followers are average, though. I mean, it's just ridiculous. They are 99% average. You're, you're, you have an entitlement problem. By the way, that's only going to impress your bullshit friends. I'm just curious. Why were you having this conversation? Like, clearly, you're not satisfied. What about my energy do you not like? Welcome back to Strike It Big. So I found it pretty straightforward to become a millionaire, obviously deliver value on, on a scale, form some kind of business. These guys are well on their way as well. But sometimes I lay in bed at night thinking the gap between millionaire and billionaire seems so large and I want to close that gap eventually. So what is it that most millionaires don't understand that billionaires do like yourself? Uh, well, one is they, they, they get satisfied on the million dollars, right? They get like they're grinding out for the million they get satisfied, they get happy. Like the first million dollars I made, I was, it wasn't a score. Like I think a lot of people think it's gonna be a score and they're gonna be, oh, I'm a millionaire. Like a, you want a lottery ticket. It's not gonna happen like that. It's gonna be a grind out. And then one day you're gonna look up and say, oh damn, I got three or four accounts and I got a million dollars or a million pounds in an account. And then you're gonna be like, I'm a millionaire. And then you're gonna be like, oh, now what do I do? Because what you did to get that is not what you're going to do to, to, to do that a thousand times. I mean, a billion dollars is one million dollars, one thousand times. The, the first million, you don't know what you're doing. And typically in the second million, you're like, it's, you're going to do it different than the first million. And then if you start, if you start stacking it and you're like, I got three or four or whatever, you're just repeating whatever you did, hopefully. Now the people that never get past the million, quit doing what they did to get to the first million. The guy gets a million dollars. He was frugal. He wasn't doing, you know, he wasn't celebrating. He's working his ass off. He makes a million dollars. Next thing you know, this happens to rappers, ball players, and, and entrepreneurs. They get a million dollars and they're like, I'm going to go buy a Lambo. That's not what got you your million dollars. That was a complete violation of the formula and the condition that actually got you what you wanted. And so you should have doubled down on whatever you did and not changed anything. Then you get stuck. Like if you do the right thing, you'll double down, 10x down, and you'll start repeating the activity and then trying to scale yourself to whatever got you that first million so that you can now say, okay, I'm going to get to 10 million down now, but I'm going to do it in two years, not 10 years. Do you set goals like that? Oh, yeah, 100%. I write my goals down every day. I keep a legal pad. Notice when I was with your dad, you know, I got a legal pad. I keep a legal pad with me everywhere I go, and I have one at my bedside. And they're financial goals? 100%. Okay, and how do you determine what that next financial goal is? I, I, I don't determine. Like, I just say, okay, $100 billion. I write that down. That was my morning target. But is that just a gut feeling of bang, that's what I want to have? That's my next target. It's a target. It's like, bang, I want to go there. It's like picking a vacation. I don't know how to get there. I don't know what car I'm going to get. I don't even know what's over there. Dubai. Okay, let's put Dubai on there. Like, I don't even know why I want a helicopter. I've done all this. I did this. I've done this for 30 years. Every single thing. Like, if you go back and read the 10X rule, I'm writing my goals in that book. Every single thing that I said I would accomplish in that book, I exceeded 10 times. Like, like these goals, all your goals, first of all, people aren't writing them down. And number two, when you're writing them down, you're writing them too small. You will achieve more than you ever thought you could achieve. 
every person is capable of more than they even imagine. Grant knows the ins and outs of luxury real estate, and most of our guests have their preferences. But I can guarantee every upper echelon investor knows to supplement their investments. That's because it's relatively easy to get rich with just one overachieving asset. But you're only gonna stay rich by diversifying with assets that defy the status quo. Sotheby's Auction House recently released internal auction data for the first time ever, and it shows the number of collectors bidding on art worth 20 to 50 million surged by 60% just last year. And our sponsors at Masterworks make it so you can too. Not only that, they're actually the largest art buyer on the market. This is because they developed a one-of-the-kind database to buy the art most likely to appreciate in value, and they made it possible for everyone to invest in it directly from their smartphone. This is an asset that defies traditional market volatility. And because of Masterworks, you can get it without needing special art market connections or millions of dollars. They've generated over $43 million in art sales and delivered the returns to their investors. Over 887,000 users have joined the platform, and with smart money recalibrating their portfolios for the new year, there may be a wait. But our subscribers can once again get priority access to their offerings by going to the link in the description or simply going to masterworks.art slash strike it big. Anyway, back to the show. And why do you want those goals? What drives you? What excites you about those uh, big numbers or big things? Uh, uh, I want a helicopter. Yeah. I don't know why. Okay. I don't know why I want a helicopter. Dude. What do you want? Just something that you can't have right now that you'd like. I'll fuck, I'd love to have that. I would like, hmm, good question. Let's say I would like uh, a mansion. Good. Okay, mansion. You don't need to know why. You just need to write it down in the morning. I have a mansion and write it down at night. When I wake up in the morning, I write down whatever the target is. But if you is. know why you want something, surely it's why. easier you, to, you to, to, no, to get there. I, I don't believe that. I, I believe people are complicating this to sell you a course. I got to know how, why, what's my why, what's my purpose. Fuck a purpose. God damn, I just want something. Like when you're a kid, man, I want a lollipop. I want an ice cream. I want Kool-Aid. I want to watch whatever, man. I want to win. But people want everything though most of the time. No, they so don't. you're not most people, your focus by just writing stuff no, down. No, no, most people, most people don't want. No, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it down this morning. Before I go to sleep tonight, I'm going to write it down again. I'm going to write it down 100 billion again if it comes up. But the helicopter didn't make the list tonight. And it didn't make it tomorrow morning or the next day or the next day. Well, maybe the helicopter is not important. So there but must be a reason for that, right? Like why? So you've, you've determined I, some things you, you really want and some things you just want. And how do you it, know it, what you really want? Because you just ask yourself before you go to sleep at night, rather than watching pornography, I'm talking to you personally. <laughs> I, actually, I, actually, I actually don't. We, I actually we told don't. him before <laughs> the show started. We gave him <laughs> so a little bit of background. Uh, uh, so, so rather than getting distracted with somebody else's wish list, whatever mm. that is, right? Whatever they're selling and promoting, dude, I'm basically taking... One minute, it takes one minute to do this. Whatever it is that comes up in my head, a beautiful wife, beautiful kids, health, great health. It could be a helicopter, it could be a plane, it could be a fleet of planes, it could be a mansion, it could be a Malibu house, it could be, uh, I wanna be a politician. I, I, I don't know, I just wanna write down this morning and the, tomorrow morning when I wake up, I wanna see what pops up again today. I'm just taking one minute, literally one, 60 seconds to do this exercise. How do you form a roadmap towards that goal though? Obviously I'm, it's great to have it, but yeah, you need to know how to get there. It, it, no, right now I need to know where I wanna go. Okay, so okay. you just point in the ship in the have right direction. Have you ever direction. been to Las Vegas? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, have you ever been to uh, Singapore? No, no I want okay, to. Good. Yeah. You want to, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good. So if you just wrote, hey, Singapore, Singapore, and it shows up for two or three days, and then it's like the mansion's not there anymore, Singapore's not there anymore, guess what? It's not important to you. Sure, but so say Singapore's what we've decided on, and I want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Now I need to book my flights. I need to work out how I'm getting, how I'm going to get maybe, there. Maybe where you I'm need to book live. a flight. Maybe I'm going there, bro, and I'll pick you up and bring you to Singapore. Why right. do you think you got to book so I a need flight? To, so I need to work out now. Who else do I know that's going to you, Singapore? You, you need to spend 80% of your time focused on the Singapore. Okay. The Singapore. The Singapore. Okay. Not how to get to Singapore. Uh, Elon Musk does not know how he's going to get to Mars, bro, but he will not let the dream go. Interesting. And so but, if I wanted to be president of the United States or a governor, right? And I'm, I'm going to be like, okay, how am I going to do this? I don't have the money. I don't have the connections. I'm not white enough. I'm not like connected enough. Dude, all you're going to do is get stuck in what you don't know. But if I could just be like governor, 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 right? And if, it, if, it, if there's enough energy behind this governor and it becomes important enough to me, bro, and I don't quit, I could be the governor of Florida. My issue with it, with I can't this, be though, the queen of England or king. Excuse but me. think about all the people that watch your content for motivation online and maybe the yeah. Mark Tilbury content as well. They feel like watching that content is them putting the work in and they're 
manifesting the thing, which would be the same way as writing something down on your notepad, but it's the taking action that actually gets you there. So what's the roadmap to the action? Most of your audience cannot simply write their goals down in the morning and at night, 30 days in a row without quitting. 99% of the people that are watching this right now, I challenge you right now, in the morning, first thing when you wake up, and the last thing, it costs nothing to do this, you don't have to buy anything to do this, and I'll bet you 99% of the people fail. And those that do, let's say they write it down, and then they yep. get on with the day, and they write it down, and they get on with the day. What's going to change in their life that's Everything. going to make those dude, things come true? Dude, your mind's going to change. You know, you, do you ski? Yeah. Uh, we're actually going soon, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, let, be, me tell you, let, me, let me tell you how you move the skis. You don't move them with your feet. You move them with your head. Your head moves, your skis move. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you ride a motorcycle, move your head, bang. When you're riding a horse, the horse is so sensitive. When you move your head, the horse moves. Where your head goes is where the rest of you goes. And unfortunately, people don't take action because number one, they don't even know where they're going. Hmm. <laughs> where are you going, bro? Uh, I'm going to work. What for? To pay the bills. Why? Uh, because I got to pay the bills. And what happens is those people achieve exactly what they have to, the necessity level. I'm paying my electric bill. I'm paying the man. I'm paying the queen or the king. I'm paying the taxes. And that's all. Now me, I'm like, okay, bro, I'm going to, I'm going to buy the mansion. I'm going to buy the Malibu. I'm going to get the Augusta 139. Uh, you know, I was writing down, this is a trick. Okay. It's magic. I'm telling you. Uh, and I'm not a guy that believes in magic, but this is magic and it works. I'm like, I'm writing down for since the age of maybe 41 years old, I had this thing, I'm going to get a helicopter, but it was originally, I'm going to learn to fly a helicopter. And I would write it down. I wrote it down for probably, I don't know, 45 days or something. And then it went away. Wasn't important anymore. I didn't have a plane. I didn't have, I was flying commercial. I didn't have any money. I was struggling in a business. I didn't even know why I wanted this helicopter, but it, every once in a while it would pop up, right? So 20 years later, and every once in a while it would pop up when I write my goals down, a helicopter. No clue how, no clue why. I'm in Dubai sitting with a, a, the minister the, of education there, super powerful guy. I'm sitting in a room with him. He's like, do you want to get on my helicopter and go to Dubai? I was in Abu Dhabi. I said, yeah, sure. We get in an Augusta 109. He, he's the pilot. I have no clue how this even happened. And he flies me to Dubai, 160 miles an hour, man. The, the airspace is his. He's commanding it all. We come back and land. And I told my wife, I'm getting a damn helicopter for sure. And we bought a, an Augusta 139 five months after we got back from Dubai. Found a buyer. It was a deal. Bought one, closed. 15 days later, bought a second one. Freaking sick. Okay. Two helicopters, not one. And that came from me writing this down. I didn't know how. It's kind of like the yellow car effect. If you, you know, yes. notice a yellow car, you, you're going to notice them everywhere. Like them if, everywhere. If you have a Before yellow car you ever yourself. saw any of them. It's exactly. 100%. And I, I completely agree with this. I always write down my goals. You two actually make fun of me for writing down the 10 year goals. This is what I want. This is the direction I want the business to be going in. But I think it needs to be paired with like a competitive nature because if you don't care enough about getting that thing and you don't want to like strive and do everything you can to reach that goal, I don't think you will. So it depends yeah. on the personality as well because I can tell you're very competitive yourself. I'd agree with that. Just to clarify though, the only reason we take the piss out of him is because he writes a 10 year plan yeah. every time we fly. So it's like, well, it's not a 10 year plan then, is it? Yeah. It's a plan but, until but I fly next. They make fun of me because it changes, but what I want changes. And yeah. I know as long as I'm going towards the right direction, everything will fall into place. But yeah. I need yeah. that direction. We're only North teasing Star. anyway, of yeah, course. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I get it. But I mean, like if you just kick that up and said, okay, I'm gonna write these down. I don't know how long it takes you to write your plan. This is not a plan. I have no plan. Yeah. So it's actually the opposite. It's not a Because you're just writing the end goal. It's like when I, before I was married, a uh, beautiful wife and two kids. That's what, the, that's what it looked like. Mm -hmm. This is not, this is only I would understand this scribble. B, W. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, in what world does that say beautiful two wife, two kids? <laughs> okay. And by the way, I got them. Okay. Uh, G, H. I know what it means. Great health. You know, uh, best shape of life. Like, like, like. You know, so, so in the, as you age, as you get things right, different things pops up, man. I want different things. I don't, I don't need a beautiful wife and two kids anymore. I got it. Now, now what? And th this is how people become like, you know, the biggest problem in the world is complacency. Mm. Like it is the biggest problem on planet earth is people being complacent and satisfied. What do you want right now? What's your, what's your goals from this morning? 
Oh, this morning? This morning is $100 billion. I want to be the largest apartment owner in, in America, which would make me the largest real estate uh, uh, owner in, in America. I believe I can do that. I'll build a hundred billion dollar real estate fund. We're at four billion dollars right now. Hundred billion, you got to have a you got to have a lot of resources to to to, to accumulate that kind of stuff. Uh, I will have a privately held company that will ha have uh, provide public access. Cardone will go from the name Cardone in my lifetime will become more of a bank than it will be a guy selling books and courses. You, I will no longer be considered uh, an internet influencer. How do you feel when people refer to you as a as as, as an internet influencer? It's cool, but it's cool. It's, but it's not it's not what I want to do. It's not who do, I. Does am. it annoy you, or does it? Is it? It's stupid. Yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like it's 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 no understanding. Part of it is my problem, right? Because, like, if you if you if we were doing this interview 15 years ago, all we would be talking about right now is sales, and then. Uh, 10 years ago, we'd have been saying, oh, the guy's a marketing genius. That's what they, Forbes called me a, a marketing genius. Okay, good. Next, what are we going to do now? So I started accumulating companies. Like I'm running 16 companies right now. We're trying to buy a $3 billion business right now. It's going to morph. Like if you study, go back and study the JP Morgans and the Rockefellers and the, dude, those guys were gangsters. They were freaking criminals, grinders, pounders, uh, the Vanderbilt family. Like these guys were fist fighting and, uh, captains of boats, like uh, uh, stealing, like, you know, poor, po out of poverty people. But, but over time, they transition their character, their name, their connections, and become banks and institutions. So that's our, my goal right now is to become an institution, not a person. I suppose there's a bit of a stigma around um, internet personalities, especially those in the like guru space. Mm -hmm. How do people know the difference between a fake guru and great a real Great question. Deal? Dude, great question. Cause it's easy to find out and people should. And, and you guys that are online buying stuff, man, the one way to find out is to simply say, show me the receipts. So the guy that comes on and says, I've sold 100 million books online. Show me the data that says you've done that. I bought uh, $4 billion worth of real estate. Show me the real estate. And if they, the second they won't show it to you, run the other way. When I say that word fake guru, are there any people that come to mind for you? Yeah, and, of course. And who are they? Of course, dude. There's a bunch of them. Well, should we expose them then? Because they're not good <laughs> for, for young wannabe entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. So who should they be looking so out who, for? Who are these guys that we should be you should do avoiding? Your own, you should do your own due diligence, okay? The guy that gives you advice that has no employees is not somebody I would take advice from personally. Now, it doesn't mean it could be good for you. It's not where I'm going to get my advice, okay? I'm not studying any guru. I don't consider myself a guru. Um, I study people that have, you know, they're doing $4 billion every week. That's who I study. I study so, this has been a hack of mine. Like I study so up, for, so up the food chain. I do not compete in the aquarium I live in. Just quickly on the topic of receipts, how easy is it to show receipts though? Because you say if they can't show receipts, then they're a fake guru. But if I said to you now, show me receipts for, you know, whatever it is that we're talking about, you, how, how easily would you do that? And also, go, go. can you even be asked? Can you be asked to show me the receipts because I don't believe that you are what you say you are? Like, well, is it really you worth ask, your time? You should ask. Before you buy something from me, you should say, hey, dude, show me, show me validation. Okay? So like you're, you're, you want to be an investor in Cardone Capital. Mm. Hey, you said you bought a property, uh, that you're buying a property. Good. Here's the address, bro. 2123 23rd Street. You can Google it, look at it. If you can't see it, don't do it. And you'll never get scammed. You'll never get scammed. Like the worst thing that can happen to anybody is you get scammed. And for, for you guys to get scammed, you got to understand there's a scammer and a scammy. You are part of the scam, okay? For a con artist to actually affect a con, you have to be willing to buy into the con. For a victim to be victimized, the, you had to get in the car with them and you had to go down the street with them and you had to overlook the bullshit and you knew it because later you, every person ever, this ever happens to says, fuck, I knew it. I knew it. And everybody does know it, but you didn't look. So yeah. what I do is look. I've been ripped off one time in my life. Do you ever get accused of being one and, of those Because guys? I didn't look. Oh, 100%. And why is that? What, what are people making that presumption? Because, uh, well, number one, because most people... The people, most of the people that are saying scammers are actually scammers, okay, or haters, 
or they scam themselves. Like the ultimate scam is that you simply like don't even write your goals down. That is the ultimate scam that you go to work for somebody else and never dream of something bigger is the biggest scam on the planet. So the school system. Schools are definitely a scam. Uh, IRAs and 401ks. What do y'all call them over there? The retirement plans? Yeah, uh, ISA. Those are, those, are scams. ISA. those are scams. Banks, complete scam. So why is the okay. stocks and shares ISA a scam? Well, I'll go over all that, but I'm, I, let's just ha handle this okay, one thing on. about how, how I, uh, what people say about me. Yeah, so, okay. so because, everyday people that look at you and say, that guy's not legit. Yeah, of course. What is it? Is it your energy? Is it, the, is it your marketing? Uh, what is it that's be, confusing could, people? Could, could be any of that. Could be, could be any of that. I'm aggressive. Uh, I'm talking about money all the time. So one thing people are going to say is rich people, real rich people don't talk about their money. They don't show their stuff off. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's because we didn't have any social media. We didn't have Instagram and video and YouTube. You didn't have any of this bullshit in the Rockefeller age. They weren't showing anything off except to their buddies. By the way, you guys that say rich people don't show, show their shit off, you don't know any rich people. Okay. I, I, how do I know that? Because rich people show their shit off. I'm with rich people. Fucking look at my thing. Uh, this lady's got an $8 million little freaking carriage around her neck. I'm like, oh my God, I paid $8 million for it. Look at my piece of art. I got a $40 million piece of art. They show their shit off. You're just not in their houses. Come see my fleet of planes. Look at my hangar. Oh, fuck, I bought the whole airport. Okay, Donald Trump. Look at my plane. Look at my name. Why do rich people do that? Is that- No, because they do it amongst themselves. Okay, now but what why happened- why do they was... care what people think? It's a status game, isn't it? Is there a level uh, of insecurity? Uh, 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 no, bro. No, bro. It's a uh, fucking look at my shit. <laughs> but but exact, exactly right. right. So I'm not talking about you specifically, yeah, yeah, but yeah. when rich people are like, look at my chain, look at my jet, but, look at this. But who are they saying that to? I'm not, uh, now, what are you talking about? What level of rich are you talking about here? I'm well, not talking about, you You brought up a chain. Okay. I'm not talking about a rapper that went and bought a $40,000 chain. He wears it outside and he's got his, he's got his paddock and he's got his Richard and, and he's got his bling, but he's broke. Right. I'm not talking about the, the young kid that's wearing Gucci and Versace and he's got no money. I'm talking about rich people. But are, are they, are I'm, they flexing it in some way to their Dude, a, a flex could be, I, I, I'm, I'm worth a billion dollars and I got a truck out there as a flex. That's the biggest flex in the world. Okay. Yeah, I fuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest flex is, fuck, I don't need any of this shit, bro. Okay. A big flex is a uh, guy's worth a couple billion dollars and he's wearing a hoodie. Massive flex. It's just in reverse. Like, fuck you. Mm. Right. I don't need nothing. That's a massive flex. Okay. Uh, uh, here's a flex. I don't raise money from banks. I don't take money from banks or institutions. It is the biggest flex I got, but nobody on the internet sees it. They're like, why is he raising money from everyday people? Because I'm not going to use J.P. Morgan, and J.P. Morgan ain't going to use me. UBS is my tenant over here. Mm. One of the biggest banks in the world pays me rent. <laughs> Fucking flex. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So now, why am I why am I showing that? Is it insecurity? Maybe, maybe, maybe I got a chip on my shoulder. Uh, maybe, maybe it's because I grew up a single, raised by a single mom, and I watched the banks take advantage of my mom. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna get it back for my mom. So I don't know what's driving me, dude. You know, I, I'm never satisfied. I have divine discontentment. There's no amount of money you could give me that would stop me from working tomorrow. And then some people will say, he's never got enough. He's greedy. I am greedy. What else you got on me? Oh, uh, you target people. I fucking do target people. I target young people. I target blacks, browns, whites, man, men, women, young, old. I target audiences. I have a health company. We target people that are that overeat. And mm. don't take care of themselves. So what else can you say about me? He markets his shit. I do. Because I'm proud of my shit. And I'm going to sell it. Oh, he talks about money all the time. It's important. So, like, there's nothing you can say about me. He's a scammer. If you think so. Mm. But have I ever scammed you? There's not a person that can say I've taken money from. They can say I talk about money a lot. They, the, but nobody can say I beat them out of any money. And they'll never talk me out of showing up and doing my thing. When I say the name uh, Jordan Balfour to you, uh -huh. what do you think? Uh, what do I think about Jordan? I don't, I don't think about Jordan much. Because he's in a similar, well, he was in a similar industry to you. I know you branched out of the I mean, marketing Jordan, sales Jordan's, stuff now. Jordan's a, uh, I mean, he's a criminal. Worse than a criminal, because people can make mistakes. He's a snitch. Do you think people can learn I don't, I don't, from a criminal, I, even if he's done something wrong? Obviously, the, the sales I don't want to learn anything used, from him. I don't want to learn anything from him, bro. Hmm. Like, could, could I learn something from Robin Williams? Probably. He committed suicide. I don't want to study him. Mm. 
Anthony Bourdain. I don't want to study Anthony Bourdain. Fuck, you guys can't pick somebody else better to study than a guy that fucking taps out on life because he's depressed. Like, I don't want to study from people that are on drugs. Sorry, not the guy I want to study from. I guess I could learn something from uh, 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 Pablo Escobar. Mm. I could. Cash is a liability. That, that's kind of what killed that guy. He had so much cash. But do I want to study Pablo? No, there's other people I can study. Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Jamie Dimon. There's so many people, successful people that I could study. Why would I settle on, what's his name? Jordan Belford. Yeah, I don't yeah, even I know. Mean, his, I, I forget his name. I mean, I guess, I guess it's... Um, the who's... only reason you know the guy is because the Wolf of Wall Leo Street. DiCaprio yeah. made a movie about his life. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't know him. I mean, I guess it depends on who's the most accessible people on the internet. And you're very accessible. He's accessible. But these billionaires... Accessible that, or successful? Accessible. Like, oh. you, you can get to your content online and yeah. you can see what you're teaching. He obviously puts out a lot of stuff. But, but you can, you can get to, Ray, you can get to Ray Dalio's information online. I can get yeah. to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger online. Who do I want to study? But what's the most consumable content? You know, that's the, people are lazy. They don't want to put in the effort and, and you know, read a book or something. They just want okay. an easy TikTok. And yeah, I, I reckon well, that's why we were so successful with the Mark Tilbury brand, because people are just so lazy. They just yeah. want to scroll yeah. and have it fed to them. Like yeah. you've got a whole team right there making your content accessible right now and yeah. easy to digest to the everyday consumer. Which well, is clearly not as easy as you guys do. But uh, <laughs> so, so if you're lazy, dude, study super successful people, not people that went to jail. Mm. Study Charlie Munger, man. Charlie Munger died 99 years old, came from nothing, had one partner his whole life, bought one house his whole life. He's worth a billion dollars when he died, ran a $200 billion company. Like, study him. He never made a fucking mistake. Study Warren. Warren's the greatest salesman that has ever walked planet Earth since and before Jesus Christ. Nobody is a better salesman than, than Warren Buffett. Why would I study Jordan Belfort that went to job? He, 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 he fucked up. What are some of the best books to read? Um, and should younger kids be reading books? I know Kai doesn't really like reading books. It's just too I've slow for I've never read a book in my life. Yeah, it's all right. So you, li you listen to books? No. No. So what are the best books that people should either listen to? Or, I would study or people, man. I would study people. So no bother with the books. Just look at what they're doing currently. I would, study, the books I would study one person. I would find somebody, start to finish their life, study every interview. I would not study 50 people. I would study one person 50 times. Mm. And, and also, I would do this. I would like look at people that you don't like first. Why don't I like him? Like, what about my energy do you not like? Because maybe, maybe that is actually what's calling you. You know, the calling is not always, I hate this job. Oh, yeah, that job might be the thing God's sending you right now. The best things that I, the, the things that I hated in the beginning and I got good at ended up becoming careers for me. What's your biggest weakness? Oh man, I got a lot of those, man. How much time you got for this interview, bro? I want all of them. As long as you, you have, as long as you want. Uh, well, it depends on what age, right? So from, from 20 to, um, well, from 15 to 25, uh, I was using drugs every day. I became a drug addict. Terrible, awful. Uh, I wanted a dad so bad that the guy, my dad died when I was 10. A guy came around when I was 16 and said, I'll be your daddy. And that came with drugs. But I went down the road, right? And the road, the road, the, the drug road goes this way. It doesn't go this way and it don't go this way. And it's killed everybody from Elvis to Jackson to nobody beats drugs. All you guys that are ever, and all of them, by the way, the psychiatric drugs, the pain medications, uh, the, prescription drugs or the local drug dealer. The pre prescription drugs today are more dangerous than the goddamn local drug dealer. So that was a mistake. Now, when I cleaned up from 25 to 40, um, oh my God, dude. You know, I was just chasing women. And, and so I went down that road. Couldn't get enough of the poontang. That's what we call it down in Louisiana. <laughs> and how did that hold you back in life and business? Because it kills creativity. It, it is uh it is a it, it is a game of pain and pleasure reach and withdraw it is a distraction it is not productive because it's not creative to the degree that you're actually building anything you're just you're just playing it's like butterflies moving here and there and it's 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 it's, it's very much a distraction by the way not to mention at 25 years old I had zero to offer a woman nothing uh so that was one of my distractions okay um 
or, or weaknesses. Uh, what else? Well, other weaknesses. Dude, uh, number one, bigger than all those, was just not believing in myself. I have never believed in myself. And how did you turn that into clearly a lot of self-belief that you have now? Well, I mean, you think I have self-belief. You, 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 you're you judging, well, let me ask but you, you don't know what I have. Let me ask you, what what is your level of self-belief? Well, I still think I underestimate what I'm capable of doing. Like even some of the things I've shared with you today, I'm going to get here and I'm going to build this or I could run for that or do that. I'm like, okay. The moment I say, yeah, that's easy to write down. And then I'm like, <sighs> I'm trying to do a deal right now. And every time I get like, you ready to pull the trigger? I'm like, oh my God, dude, my gut. Like it would be like, oh my God, my whole life's going to get turned upside down. This thing's going to fucking blow up in my face. It's going to fail. What if it fails? Like, you know, like I get scared. Are you addicted to that feeling now then? So first it was uh, drugs, then women. Now maybe no, feeling I scared. Say, that I, I didn't say feeling. I was addicted to women. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so and by the way, these addictions are mm. choices. They're not, you're not powerless. Mm. Okay. I don't care how many times they tell you, you don't have control. You have control. Mm. You're not, you're not, there's no such thing as a disease with addiction. Addiction is a choice. You pick up pill, put it in mouth. Okay. A, a, a disease is cancer. You have no control over it. You can't even explain how you got it. Did it feel that way at the time though, when you were taking drugs and you, you did have that need for many no, years no, to no. take what, them? What it would feel, felt like at the time was, fuck, I am completely a degraded human being. And, and I can't break the habit, but it, one day I did. I quit every day, 10 times a day, every day for almost 10 years. But did I it, finally quit the last time, the last time I quit. What was different that last time then? I don't know. Maybe the first, uh, maybe the first 10 years of quitting. Maybe I needed to quit every day for 10 years, which would have been 36,000 times to finally the 36,000th in one time that it worked. That means all the other ones worked too, by the way. All the books I, I, I didn't finish might have got all the bad books, all the bad events, all the bad courses, all the shit I never did. Maybe that actually helped me get to the one thing that finally like, bang, I get it. Did you ever think about quitting life at that stage? Uh, you mean suicide? Yeah. Uh, no, I've never thought about, like never seriously thought, okay, I'm gonna kill myself. Now, now I had three buddies yeah. that tapped out. That's how, that's how much of a dangerous situation I was in. Do you think young men need to hit rock bottom at some point? No, no you do to, not have to hit rock no. bottom to, to, by the way, I don't think I hit rock bottom. Hmm. I think any of you guys like I hit rock bottom. You don't even know what rock bottom is. Like there's always another bottom. From the way I look at you anyway, you're way more determined and motivated than the average person. Mm. And I'm just trying to figure out why, whether that might just be an innate thing that you have or experiences that you've been through because something's separating you from the crowd. And if we can dissect what that yeah, is, yeah. we might be able to give that knowledge to other people who are maybe struggling with motivation yeah. or, or yeah. determination. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you the little trick for me, it's not walking on fire or beating my chest or reading a book. It's not, I'm not going to get, I'm, I'm going to get temporarily motivated by that. The thing that motivates me is success. It is the best drug in the world. And nobody talks about it. My drug of choice is winning. And the more I win, the more I want to win. Go, go get on the Gulf Street. Go get on my plane one day. Go, let me fly you guys from here to, to back to London on my 650. You'll we'd, be, we'd fucked, love up. That, You'll be yeah. fucked up forever. <laughs> what happens is most of the people watching right now never had the experience we never put our feet in anything that's, that, that, that's amazing. So the guy's like, I don't need to fly private. Uh, I don't need a mansion. You've never been in one, man. Like you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't have, I don't need money. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't understand like, well, I had money once. No, you didn't have enough money. Okay. Uh, I went big and it didn't work. No, you went, you went big and stopped. You should have gone bigger to find out what big was like. Most people just don't have the experience. This is why in, in black communities and brown communities, the kids don't have any examples in, in even in white communities. Like if you grew up poor, white, single mom, you, you don't have any examples of like possibilities. So you're like, okay, I'm going to get a good job and I'm going to be grateful for my job. And so there's nobody saying, and this is why this is such an important time right now, because a guy like me can show you my plane. Now, when I show the plane or the helicopter or the house in Malibu, okay, or my dreams, I'm going to get a bunch of hate with it, but only from people that have given up, not from people above, the, above me in the food chain. 
above me in the boot food chain, the only person that would hate on my style is somebody that actually is tapping out on the hustle. Elon would never, ever, ever uh, have disdain for my hustle. He'd be like, yeah, bro, go. But let's say, let's say there was a rich guy out there that is no longer actively pushing, shoving, uh, hiring, growing. He's going to be like, why well, you got to show your shit off? Because I'm irritating him. He's like, you're in the game. So, and anybody that's given up on the game is always going to hate me. What would you say to someone um, that's in their 20s that hasn't given up on life, but looks at that stuff and, and feels like they're not as motivated? It's actually making them unhappy because they see how small of a fish they are and how much is out there for them to get. And, you know, people can be like princes in their small towns, but when they come into the big world, they realize that they're nothing at all. And it can sometimes affect your motivation rather than make you more motivated. Yeah, so you, you walk in a room and, you know, I was, at a, I was at a dinner in the Hamptons. There was 52 billionaires in the room. I was the poorest person in the room. How did that feel, though? It felt inspiring. I'm like, fuck, God damn, the possibility. I don't have envy. I don't have any envy. Like, I don't have it. It is, it is, it is to me, one of the most destructive things that people have is envy. I don't have that. Like, do I have a chip on my shoulder? Yeah. Do I want to be those guys? No, I don't want to be them. I want to be me. And they, they allow, they show me the possibility, but I don't have, I'm, I don't, I'm over the envy thing. I, I don't, I don't, I don't have it. And, and I don't have a need for people to like me. Do you think that's rare though? And how does someone get over that? Because most people want people to like them and they are envious. It doesn't others. work. It doesn't work. You, like just study the most successful people. They're like, I don't care if you like me or not. I like me. I have to like me. I have to know the truth for me. I got to know what my path is. I know what my goals and dreams are. The teacher in the classroom doesn't. Oh, you're thinking too big. Uh, my mom, I wanted to start a real estate business when I was uh, 31 years old. I called my mom up. She's my best friend. I said, mom, I'm going to start a real estate business. You don't want to do that, son. That's going to be a bunch of problems. That was $4 billion she would almost taught me out of. I'm like, are you crazy? What's wrong with you? Stay in your lane, mama. Love me. Support me. Feed me. You make great apple pie. Do not give me financial advice because only half of her advice was good. Yeah, I think a lot of people make that mistake, don't they? They listen yes. to those around them who aren't the people they want to be. So why take financial advice from your mum who might be making 40, 50 grand a year if, you, if your ambitions are higher than that? Yeah. Listen to someone who's there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, this is a problem too because we take advice from everyone. That's yeah. a big mistake that I made as a young as a young man, I, I would take advice from anyone. Like I was so hungry. And I think this is more your audience than the lazy person. I know we put a lot of attention on people that don't follow up, but I think a bigger problem is you guys take advice from everybody. You watch their, their uh, clip, you list, take their advice. And then you go listen to Dave Ramsey and then you move to boo boo. And then you go over here to Jim. And by the time you're done, the reason you don't do anything, I actually don't believe in laziness. I believe laziness is caused because of confusion. People don't do anything because they're going to go left, go right, go straight. At that point, I'm like, the best thing to do is stop because I don't know where I'm going. So that's why I tell you, man, the thing that's really helped me is I'll take one guy and study his entire life. And I could study that life for years, maybe two years or three years, one person and never take any other content in. Did you like yourself as much when you were 25, 30? Or is that something that's come with age? Because I know I discussed with my dad, if he gets hate comments, he really doesn't care. And I think that might be partly because he's just grown up and at this point, he's just so disconnected from it. What does it matter to him? He's lived his life. He knows he's got self-worth. Yeah. I mean, it bothers me. So, yeah, I, I don't like seeing people not like me, you know, but. Has it got easier with age though, as you've got older? Well, it was very difficult when I was in high school. You know, I was trying to be popular. And that was the last time I tried to be popular because uh, it didn't work. Mm. And I became somebody. I didn't like me when it was done. Mm. I became popular and didn't like the guy that I was and didn't actually like anybody that was around me and don't know any of these people today. They know me. So how do you pick your circle now? What were you doing differently in high school that meant you were surrounded by people you didn't like versus- I was trying to fit in, now. dude. I was trying to fit in. I'm trying to make the grade. I'm trying to, you know, be the buddy. I'm trying to, you know, be the most successful, uh, get the girl's approval. Like I shouldn't even, high school is one of the most damaging institutions in the world. 
Did trying to be the buddy though and popular help you in your life? Because even now when we're doing this yeah. interview, yeah. the way that you speak, mm -hmm. you're involving the rest of the room in your speech, you uh, know, and it's not what we would typically see. So is that something that maybe you what, learned what, in What school? would you typically see? Talking to us. But yeah. I'm not saying it's a good thing. The I way mean, that you can Well, there's bring more of the them than there life. is of you. Yeah, the, the confident know? guests talk to all of us. The, the ones that are not confident uh -huh. talk to maybe me, just one person. Uh -huh. We've never seen someone talk to the whole room. Oh, is that right? Which is good. Oh, that's I can, cool. I can notice thing. it straight away because, for well, example, well, your dad's over there. He's the only one I'm trying to impress. He's, a, <laughs> he's the richest guy in the room. Yeah, but for example, I'll sit here, and when you're sat yeah. there, it's very easy for you to look at Curtis. So yeah. if someone is less confident, they won't make eye contact with me oh, because yeah. they're going out of their way well, to make it. But the, whereas you, you can make eye contact with I've everybody done, and involve the whole room. I've been doing big audiences for a long time. Mm. Okay, so, so where did that come from? I am a walking, observing. Who can help me? Mm. I'm a. I'm looking. I'm looking for. Everything, every action and every thought is how do I, how do I use this moment to serve my target? I'm not just doing something all day long. I don't have a job. Okay. If I had a job, it is to achieve this target. So speaking of jobs, yeah, I think that a lot of people watching would probably rather work for you and make a quarter of a million or 500,000 a yeah. year than go and start their own business. So what do you look for when you're hiring talent and how can people sort of progress through the ranks with you? That mustache is going to look good on you, by the way. Yeah. You rock that thing out. <laughs> Bro, I'm, I'm, rocks it all the I'm, time. Just, I'm just Put playing in the comments, uh, how good do you think his mustache is going to look when he crosses uh, that thing? Fuck now. But yeah, I'm just, oh, yeah. Uh, these are the cards I've been dealt, so I'm just rocking it and that's all I can do. Yeah. I can't get the full beard. That's fine. Um, what did you get? Dirty Sanchez once. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean though? What, what does what mean? Dirty, Dirty Sanchez. Sanchez. That's the comment uh, that they got with his. It's uh, very divided stuff. in the comment section about the about the stash. Mixed so opinions. Even when I go out to the bar, it's mixed me, opinions. Stay with it, bro. Stay Cardone with it. Well, I, gave, I gave it a fresh shave two days ago, so it was looking longer. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> um, stay with it. Um, when I was growing up, we were doing mustaches, and now they're back again. Are they back again? I think I'm the only one rocking. No, one hundred percent. I ain't seen one in a while. Back, they're back in it's America because of Maybe you. Kai. They're back in America, Kai. Everybody Kai wants to be you. big. Everyone's trying to get it going. So, what do I look for with somebody that's you know? First thing I look for is what I don't uh, things I don't want to see. I, I don't want to see overspending. Like guy drives up, he uh, there's a part, guy comes up, he wants to sell part of his company, he wants me to look at it. He drives up in a Rolls Royce. Before he sat down in the chair, I knew the deal was done. He was 25, four years old, I'm 24, 25 years old. I'm like, there's no way I'd go in business with him. Why is that? Because he's a degenerate. He had a new company. It wasn't even doing that well. Okay, what the fuck are you doing with a goddamn, don't try to impress me with your car. By the way, that's only going to impress your bullshit friends. Right. It's not going to impress a real guy. So how rich do you need to be to get a car like that? Well, it's not just how rich. It's how long you've been rich. Right. So if you were rich instantly and you're going to go buy Lambo, stupid. It's stupid, yeah. man. Like, it looks stupid. Like, I could have bought a Rolls Royce when I was 40 years old. I didn't buy it because I'm like, I'm too young for that car. Uh, I didn't have a Rolex until I was 42 years old. I could have bought the Rolex when I was 31 years old. I didn't. Why? Because I was buying assets. I wasn't trying to show off and, and get approval from people. The Rolls Royce, the Gucci, the Versace... Uh, the belts, all that stuff is just trying to get approval. Now, if you're a woman and you're wrapping up in Chanel, like my wife, she wears Chanel. So she's got, she's rocking this Hermes hat. Drives me fucking nuts. I hate all that shit. You know, uh, I got some of these shoes on. Somebody gave me these shoes. I would never buy a thousand dollar pair of shoes. Mm, okay. So, so, so now what am I looking for yeah. from an employee? Yeah. So if you had okay. to maybe task Sarah with hiring someone for you and you gave her maybe five attributes or traits. Well, Sarah would never be allowed to hire anyone. Hypothetically. Okay. But like, the, but that, that person's really important. Who's going to do the hiring? It's not mm. going to be me, but I'm looking for somebody that whatever, wherever they are in life, they're hungry, extremely motivated financially. If it's for a sales job, if you're not financially motivated, I don't even want to have a conversation with you. Number two, you're you're clean, okay. Not just you, but your car. If I could go, if I could go to your apartment and see how you take care of your apartment, if it's disheveled, your kitchen's all dragged out, you got stuff all over. I I don't want anything to do with you. But I could probably find that out from your car. Your trunks all buried and stuff. What? Is that no, I'm just place? I'm just thinking that. What's your kitchen look like right now? Well, my girlfriend does all of that. I'm not clean, but I get it all handled. Okay. But as long as my business is handled, <laughs> then I think that's still a win. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever, dude, mm. as long as it's picked up, I don't care who did it. Maybe yeah. you hired, had a maid come in and do it. So interestingly, then you're looking at who they are as a person before you even look at their skill set. C don't care about their education level. Now there's a third little test. Okay. All right. Turn that phone over. 
See, he can't do it. Now he did it, but he had to think about it first, okay? So he just showed me, wait a minute, I got to know why first. I'm not hiring him. I'm considerate, and I think about things before I do them. I, I asked you to turn the phone over. There you go. But do you want people like that surrounded you to be yes men? No, you I want, want somebody that can take questions? an order. I want somebody that can take an order. Fair enough. Okay. And if I'm hiring you to come in my deal, I want you to be able to take an order. End of story. I don't want a leader. I want a follower. Okay, so that proves want he's more of a business me. owner rather than maybe uh, an employee. But what about for your number twos and number threes? I understand if you're oh, hiring so, someone yeah. to be in the bullpen out there, but what if you are hiring a, a number two? Surely you then want them to push back on you because if you have everything your way all of the time, you're bound to I'm make not, a mistake not, at some point. A hundred percent, but mm. if we're going to make mistakes, we're going to make my mistakes. Fair enough. So, you know, when Elon went into Twitter, okay, first thing he did is exactly what I would do, fire as many people yeah. as you could possibly get rid of and then find out what can you really run this thing on, you know, and that worked, but you know, he got a lot of hate because everybody's like, Oh, he's freaking get rid of people. Guess what? That's what I would do. I'd get rid of people too. First thing you do got to do. If you want great people, you got to get rid of the bad people. You can't, you can't, you can't drag marginal. Great people do not want to be around marginal people. So the hiring is one thing, but firing is much more important than hiring. Now you got to hire. You want to add people, right? We have uh, we have 260 employees here, 230 in in Scottsdale, another 600 in the real estate. I don't have enough people, man. I need like 10,000 people to get what I want, not 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 a thousand. How many chances do people get before you fire them? Because we've had a few issues with people working on our team, and I've got faster and faster and faster with the way I fire people. Yeah. Because honestly, it's just not worth the hassle. If they make a mistake once, I just feel like they're going to repeat it again and again. Let's just cut it off right there. I agree with that. Yeah, we've yeah. started to notice patterns, haven't we? At the start, it's kind of like, maybe it's a one-off, but we've noticed mm -hmm. that if it does keep happening, it usually doesn't stop happening. Yeah. So now we're just quick with it. Yeah. So we graph everybody. Everybody in the organization has a graph metrics that we can measure to a target. So the graph's either going up or it's going flat or it's going down. And it's going flat or down, they're going. You have a lot of companies uh, or ventures that you're involved with. What's your favorite right now? My favorite, man, I don't have a favorite, man. I, I, we have a, we have a health company that we bought, uh, 24 months ago. That company was doing, uh, you know, 3 million bucks a month. It'll do 18 million. This eight, it was doing 3 million a year. It'll do 18, six times that this month. I'm pretty excited about that. So just to clarify, he has a favorite kid, but not a favorite business. Uh, I have, it, it's kind of a favorite right now, but it, as soon as I move to the real estate, then that, that's a favorite because I got two big deals I'm working on right now. So that becomes- So does your favorite become whatever's making the most money? No, no whatever has the potential and possibility, right? Okay. So they're all favorites. Like I'm not, I don't have any so, of them. So the reason you ask is, for example, you might I, really love doing the, the speaking events or the conferences. Uh, I, I, I don't like that business at all. Why not? They're just not good businesses, okay? But I don't have a black sheep. If I have a black sheep, I'm this isn't like a kid. If I had a black sheep, I'm getting rid of it. I'm going to sell it, dump it. Now, the event business, it, it, you know, these big 30,000 person events that we do, they're, they're terrible. They're terrible. I, I make them work. They work for us, but it's not something I'll be doing in the future. Just in terms of profit in the next, margins and stuff like that? Or is it not it, just not profitable enough? Oh, no, it's very profitable. So what's not working about it? Uh, they're just where I want to go. Right. That's not what it'll be. Right. So I'll throw that away. That, that business, we do one event a year does $20 million and it raised another 60 million, but I won't do it in the future. I won't do the 20 million part. I'll do a free event that'll do a hundred million dollars in, 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 in raise money. Right. So, but it's just a bad business, dude. Nobody's ever scaled it. Right. I don't want to be running around the world doing events. It's not going to look good when you're 75 years old and they're putting you out in a wheelchair. No, that's interesting because we we speak to obviously a lot of entrepreneurs that come on the show and a lot of them talk about this concept of having different businesses for different periods of life mm -hmm. and knowing when to step away from one business because you've scaled it to wherever you can scale it and it's time to, what's the next thing? So I think it's interesting to see that even at your level, there's, there's levels and you have to be aware of when to shut things down. When yeah. the, timings and stuff like that. Yeah, every product has this, you know, shelf life. Yeah. I think it's interesting how, um, how old are you at the moment? 65. 65 and you're so fast and you look so young for your age. I mean, oh, you're, thanks. you're 10 years older than my dad 
and obviously you look a lot younger. He oh, looks wow, sharp wow. too. Let's let's not let's not uh, put Mark down. I'm not, I'm not putting him down, <laughs> but I'm just wondering from a selfish point of view, how do we stay young like you? What are you doing? Because there's obviously things behind the scenes that we don't know about. Well, uh, definitely, I definitely work out every day. That's one thing I do, and I regret not doing that when I was 30. I should have been doing that when I was 30 and 40, but I didn't have to. I had a I have a very high metabolism, so I could I I like I I just process fast. So, but I should have been working out when I was, how old are you? 25. Dude, get in there right now. I mean, come on, man. God damn. Come on, bro. I'm on the way. <laughs> I've, I've been going. For me, the issue isn't the gym. It's the food. I've been going to the gym consistently and I've actually yeah. been really enjoying it. It's a new venture. I know, but, but when, when you really go to the gym, it. you actually have to pick up some weight, right? Do legs. When's the last time you did legs? He doesn't do, do legs. He much. doesn't do legs. Yeah, about, about four weeks sick. ago. Okay. About four weeks so ago. I did, I didn't when I was 25 years old and 35 and 45, I didn't ever do a leg day. I did all biceps. It was all show off muscle. And, and I could go in there twice, a, twice a, a week and get away with it. I just had the body type. You don't have the body type. For what? Okay. You cannot get away with anything. Yeah. Okay. Every, every little, you have a little more Bro, than he does. I eat whatever I want, do whatever I want. And it just makes no difference to me at it, all. It, exactly. But you got to get in there. How often do you work out? Once or twice a week? No, four or five times a week when I've been doing it. But while we've yeah, been get traveling, a trainer. I'm off. Get a trainer. He has this thing I where sort of do. he's okay. either fully see, in or see, now I would never hire him in. because he can't even listen. He's like, hey, uh, why, yo, why yo, can't but, I yo, listen? Yo, but, yo, but. <laughs> why, why can't I listen? Well, because I'm telling you what to do. Go on. Tell me what to do then. Go on. No, I'm telling you, get, get in the gym every day, yeah. get a trainer every day. And you'll well, build muscle. I, I train with someone who is much more experienced than me. So I would class yeah. that as a trainer. Yeah. And I'm in there four or five days a week, which what I you, would say is weigh? optimal. What do you weigh? 61, 62 kilos. What is that? So that's a, yeah, it's 142 pounds or something. 134. 134. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to be like, Hey dude, I want to get to 150. You know, mm. I'm going to get to 150 at 16 pounds. Your buddy can't do that. If your buddy could do that, he would have already done that. You got the wrong guy. Nah, because the issue is with myself and the way that I'm eating my food. No one else can okay, help me whatever. with that. Only right. I can help myself. <laughs> how, how can a trainer <laughs> help me eat more food? I have to do it myself. <laughs> no, no. He has an answer for everything. Yeah. That's okay. What we so are anyway, doing. so, so what am I doing? What's my secret? Dude, I work out every day, at mm. least once a day. Okay. Um, I do legs twice a week. I'm on our 10X health system. We have best supplements in the world. I do red light therapy every day. Okay. It's unbelievable. There's red light that you can't get enough light, particularly like where you guys live. There's no light. You guys are going to get natural sunlight. Like in four or five months of the year, there ain't no sunlight where you live. And um, what's the benefit? Sorry to cut you off, but what's the benefit of the red light stuff? The red light, because you need light. Your body, your organs need light, right? Your balls need light. Your lungs need light. And you can't get enough light uh, if this is all the light you get, you're done. And so there's, there's invisible light. There's four bands of light. You can't even see them. And so, but, the, but the body receives them. So I do a red light therapy bed. I did one this morning. It, it, it's good for your skin. It's good for your lungs, dude. It's good. Like I'm 65 years old, man. And I know guys that are 40 years old. Can't keep up with me. Going back to these, um, young millionaires spending their money on, um, you know, designer clothes and stuff like that. As a real, you guys jump around a lot, man. We were now we uh, yeah, but I'm trying to cut. I'm, I'm kind of bored of the conversation with uh, your gym stuff yeah. because wow, we, wow, we're here. Man, every I like day. this guy. He's my favorite of you guys. Oh, okay, what? Why is he your favorite? I don't know, dude. I think he's got the most potential. <laughs> Thank you, man. What do you see him doing in the future? Uh, great things, actually. He's a very good salesman. Maybe uh -huh. you could come and sell uh -huh. some of your products. <laughs> but yeah. actually, yeah, bringing uh, yeah. Go, going off that point, yeah, let's do it. What what can he do to improve his sales skills? Because he sells all of our brand deals and stuff like that. Yeah. What what what's the biggest what's what's the biggest offer you make? Um, well, it would be for YouTube content would probably be the biggest offer, how and much, I would be I'd yeah. be trying to lock them in for multiple you know videos at a time. So as long as I could get the deal for yeah, but how much how much money us. are we talking about? Over a hundred k. Yeah, they're okay. multi. So a hundred thousand dollars. And what's below that? What's the choice below that? Like maybe like a one TikTok deal, something like that. And then what's above the hundred grand? That would have to just be a long term deal. Yeah, so the, so maybe signing for a couple of years or a year maybe. Yeah. So what would that cost? A million. A, uh, yeah, a million dollars. I signed. Yeah, we did one for half a million, million not too long ago. Yeah. So yeah. that's you know I would I would have a, a, an A B C and offer for everyone. Mm. Uh, even the guy that's saying a hundred grand's too much money, I would have something above him. Be like, hey, yeah, I understand it's a lot of money. But let me just tell you what some of our other clients are doing. And I would start raising prices on everything, particularly people that complain about price. The moment somebody complains about price, the next thing I'm going to do is raise the prices on everybody. So I don't drop price to satisfy people. I raise the price. So you think you had a problem? Let me show you another one. 
because um, you can watch people go when when they're in their buying patterns. The same people that are complaining about how much something is spend more money every time. Oh my God, it's too much money to watch this fight. Boom, they buy it. Oh, it's too much money for this car. Buy it. Uh, it's too much for the Wagyu. Give me two of them. They all complain before they buy. So what you should do is raise your pricing and have a place when they, they say 100 grand is too much because that's not why they're not buying. They're not buying because of the price one way or the other. They don't think it's going to work. Yeah. Number sure. one reason people don't buy things. That would be the biggest objection or it would be like, oh, this video yeah. got half a million views, but then the next one only got 110,000. So yeah. how do we know yeah. that we're going to get the same amount? That's probably the biggest yeah. objection. Mm. How can he go about building a dream a little bit better? So getting that person to buy in, for example, you're trying to sell um, a sponsorship to the podcast. I, I, I would, it's like, I, this is where it's going in the yeah, future. Yeah, I would personally wouldn't try to build the dream as much as, as, as I would be like, hey, what if you don't do this? I'd take it away from them, take them back to zero. So what play We take, them, we take play people back to zero. So I'm like, hey, let's just assume you don't do this because by the way, you don't have to do it. Mm. 100 grand's a lot of money, 100,000 pounds, a lot of bread, dude. Okay, let's say you don't do it. Mm -hmm. Now you got your hundred thousand pounds and you're not on YouTube and you're not on TikTok and nobody knows you. But I'll just sponsor that podcast. Well, you could go back to them. Just go back to them then. You go back to them, keep doing what you've been doing. But I'm just curious, why were you having this conversation? Yeah. yeah. Like clearly you're not satisfied. Mm. Okay. You're a single woman and you're having a conversation with me in a bar, but you've been dating this other guy. If your girlfriend starts spending time with me, bro, she ain't happy. Mm. She's sitting there talking to me for 35 minutes, telling me about her boyfriend. Bro, she ain't happy. She's actually thinking about doing something else. So, like, they could tell me all day long, I'm not going to change, I'm not going to change, I'm not going to change. Why are you talking to me? They're yeah. interested. No, I think okay? that's good advice, though. I think that's something that I could implement more is just being, like, stronger with it. And it's like, I, I find this happens, though. It's like when, if we haven't got as many deals and I know that I need deals, you can you want them so bad that it then shows and then yeah. you find it harder to get deals where as soon as I've got a couple of deals under my belt and I literally do not care anymore, then they all start coming yeah. easier. Everything becomes easier as soon as I've got a couple under my belt because I just mm -hmm. don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah. And that, yeah. that shows. Yeah. Mm. As a real estate billionaire, what do you think about people buying their own houses? I think it's a terrible, awful, ridiculous yeah. dumbness. And I think it's selfish. Why is it's it selfish? selfish? Because you're thinking about yourself. I got to live in my house. It's just a mythology, okay? It's, 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 uh, I got to work for myself. That's another mythology, you know? But what if I, I want to buy this home for me and my family? Yeah. That's not selfish. Why, why do you want to buy it? To protect my family so they have somewhere to live. I uh, guess it's about security. Uh, uh, where right? you live, why don't you put them in jail? That's protection. You might be safer in jail than you would be in trouse. Right, but at it might not be as, uh, yeah, the quality you, of life might not be as good in jail. Okay, but the quality of your life, you could rent an apartment, a flat, and ha your family's just as safe. And by the way, your money's safer. And take the money that you save renting and take and then go invest in some property or invest in your business or invest in marketing is a much better investment than buying a house. Okay, I can take you for the last hundred years. Uh, people that bought single family homes to live in for themselves and their family. First of all, you're going to get rid of it. Why buy something you're going to get rid of? If you're going to get rid of it, use it. Just rent it and use it. Like, and 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 take the money that you would have spent buying that house. Elon Musk has zero houses, none. He has nothing to do with homes. He's like, I'm building space shuttles and, and, and cars and trucks. I have no interest in a house. Why? Because he doesn't want to be distracted by where he lives. He wants to be mobile and move around the planet. Steve Jobs owned one home his whole entire life. Warren Buffett had one house his whole life. He's got $200 billion under his control. He focuses on his business, not on where he lives. Do you own a home? Yeah, I own two of them. It's still stupid. Right. Okay, I own an expensive watch. Doesn't mean it's right. I just got rid of a Rolls Royce Cullinan. I don't recommend it to anybody. It's dumb. Dude, I was 20, I was 28 years old and I went and bought a house for myself. It was stupid. I'm just telling people the mistakes I made. Mm. Okay. It was stupid. It was ridiculous. Why did I need to buy my house a house? I should have taken the same money, which wasn't a lot of money. I put five thousand bucks down on the house. I should have taken the five grand and invested in marketing. 
Yeah, I completely you agree. Like pitch, agree. Clip that so you can use it for your clients, okay? Yeah, okay. I completely agree with you, but for the average person that maybe wouldn't <laughs> invest in these other Y'all areas. spend too much time talking about average people, man. Why don't you just focus on the people that want to be exceptional? Fuck the average people. But do you not think that every get, get a, single- Fuck get them. Get, 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 <laughs> get, get, get a piece of average and fuck off. If you average. have a house, fuck but you. But all of your followers are average though. They, they will be. Whoa. So if you don't focus on the average person, then how are Whoa, you connecting with your audience? Don't insult the Cardone crew. Bro, like it's that. a fact, 100%. If you've got 4.5 million followers on Instagram, they are 99% average. Yeah, I, I, but I'm not talking to that. I'm not talking to that part of them. I guess we're trying to handle their talking, objections. They're going to say in the comments. Okay, this like, is the hack. Oh, it forces me to have like a savings account you in got, my you house. Should, you shouldn't have a savings account. I, average people. You guys shouldn't have a savings account. That's why you're average. You're victims. You're being victimized by a banking institution that that is built around an educational system that supports a government that's fucking you. So they need to put that money to work. Where are the best places to there's, put it to there, work? There's no reason to have 90 days of savings. It's, it, it's mm. completely ridiculous. This, this was for banks. Buying houses was for banks. 401ks were for banks. IRAs are for banks. Retirement accounts are for banks. Saving money is for banks. Uh, all this is bullshit for the banks. Okay, They do not even do what they tell you guys to do. What they do is you put your money. I don't have any money on me right now, but I did. Don't worry about it. So you take your garbage paper, pounds or U.S. dollars that are going down in value. You you trade time to get some money, and then you take the money to the bank and say, please take care of my money, Mr. Banker. He's like, yeah, I sure will. You know what they do? Within a microsecond, they send the money out. They call me up. Hey, Cardone, you want to you wanna borrow some of this money? Yeah, sure, like to use their money. So people are already investing with me. The people that don't take my advice actually are funding my projects because they save money. How much cash do you keep then? Because I would be curious to know. Uh, today I have, as of this morning, um, see, this is transparency. Yeah, come. This is what you guys should expect from your whoever you're getting advice from. So that's, that's today. Is he allowed to read it out? Cash available. Can no, I, re- no, I don't oh, okay, think I okay, should. Okay. I think I should just keep people curious. Okay, okay. can I? Can should, I should, which one is to react again? There's three Whoa. accounts. There, oh my god. <laughs> there's three accounts. Okay, those mm-hmm. three accounts are current today. There's my wife's at the bottom. Are you happy by with the, that, or are you the trying way, to get rid of stuff now? Her, hers is smaller than mine. And it's separate. Uh, yeah. We have separate accounts. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, I get that account every day. And I'm not bragging about this. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of. This I was going to say, so I want to get rid of too much money. in there now for you. Uh, One dollar is too much. I yeah. don't want money. I don't want any money. I want assets. Yeah. So I'm trying to convert this to an asset, but I also need to be um, diligent to not just waste it. So I'm trying to find assets. I want to collect assets, not cash. I don't want a savings account. I don't want a retirement account. I want assets to pay me. I don't want houses. Houses don't pay me. I want stuff that pays me. So what's the best asset for someone that doesn't want to be average? Well, the best asset is you. Okay. There's no, no better asset for him, for you, for you, for, for your average listener, which by the way, I don't think you guys are no, average. We don't talk they to the average it. anymore. I, no. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Okay. We've uh, only got extraordinary <laughs> listeners now. We do. We're, you we're, guys are all extraordinary. No matter what I read or consume or learn, dude, nobody can rob it from me. You can't take it from me. Once you learn, once I learn something, nobody can steal it. The government, the queen or the king can't tax it. That's the single best investment. As long as you keep doing it. And the second one is going to be uh, your business. If you have your own business or you have a trade or you have something you do well, an occupation, a skill, that, that, that's the next best thing. The third thing, the thing that you don't have to trade time and money for is some asset that will make you, that will pay you a drip. Drip. It's giving you a drip, some drip of money. Like you don't want your faucets to drip, but you want your money to drip on you. And so for me, that is a real estate asset. Like we, we buy Cardone Capital. We got a bunch of English people, by the way. Aren't y'all called English? Yeah, yeah. British English. A bunch of British English people that invest with us here in America at Cardone Capital. So what do you think are the best skills? Because you say invest in yourself, but um, lots of people think, oh, that sounds a bit like, I don't really know what to do. Investing in myself is quite vague. Oh, What's the actual skills it, it, that it, they can be focusing it, on? If you're a golfer, you're going to go get a, a coach mm. to teach you how to actually perfect the golf swing. If you want to learn how to strike it big, you're going to have to get a coach to train you how to actually strike it big uh, 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 consistently. No, nobody is going to be great because of their natural God-given talents. God, God, God gave you some great talents. You, it's your job to perfect them. So if you're, um, 
what, what, if you're a sales guy, dude, you got to get great at sales. You can't be good at sales. Being a good salesman is punishment. It's like living in freaking hell every day. I'm a good salesman. No, you need to be great at sales. And once you get great, you need to become a master of the game. And the master, if you're the top in your in your company as a salesperson, you should be teaching the other people in the company your skill set, sharing it unselfishly. Yeah. What's the best way to find your talent though? Because obviously we found our talent with um, obviously sales, videography, videography for me and, and um, directing. But I speak to lots of people that don't actually know what they're talented at. So therefore they have no direction. So what's the best way to find that talent? I mean, I, I would, I, I'm, again, I'm going to go back to my goals, man. My goals are going to, my goals are going to lead me to my talent. Okay. Talented people do not, the most talented do not win this game. So it's hard work. Uh, well, I mean, I'm just saying like, if I could own a football team, I don't need to throw a football or kick one. Mm. I could just own the team. So is having a talent sometimes a, a bit of a downfall because you might chase that kind of art or that passion in yeah, which I, could not be financially the best thing to do. Yes, 100%. Like this whole idea of follow your passion is, again, this is a selfish concept. Like the house, you know, it's selfish. I don't want to do that. I don't want to learn that. Uh, I don't want to take the time. I don't want to invest my money. Uh, I deserve to live in a house. These are all entitlement and selfish concepts, okay? I don't like sales. Very selfish, stupid. I don't want to spend money to market my company. Selfish. Uh, we, we're a word of mouth company. It's completely stupid. What, what does that even mean? We're word of mouth, okay? That means the, there's 16 people that talk about your company and, and you live where there's a, a, on a planet with 8 billion people. So I need to stay small and I want to control my clients and, and my customers and I want to have a boutique. It's selfish. It's selfish. It's small. It's little and it doesn't work. And so I need to be passionate before I d get into it. It's, you, you're, 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 you have an entitlement problem. I'm not passionate about anything except my goals. There's the goal. There's the dream. Okay, that's what I'm excited about, the dream. I don't know how, what talent, what skill set, or what people I got to, or how much misery or pain I got to go. That Whatever the goal and the target, let's say it's 100 billion or a billion or 10 million or whatever the number is, okay, or the thing is, I want to raise money for uh, to solve water problems, whatever the deal is, right? Uh, th th then it's like, okay, what skill set do I need? I don't have that skill set. So I'm going to trade money to somebody else that has that skill set. If someone has let's say a fairly small business, they might be self-employed or they might have 10 to 20 employees. What would your tangible advice be to help them scale that up to new levels? 10X. And how tangibly can they you, do you, that? You have 10 people, you, your, your new target should be 100 people. Now you're not gonna go from 10 to 100 tomorrow because now you got a new problem. You're like, I don't have the payroll. Right. I, don't, I don't have the income for it. I don't, I don't even know where to find uh, 90 more people. Okay, good. That's your new problem. Right. So I, I'm, I'm doing a million dollars in revenue. OK, your goal is to go to 10 million. Do not try to go from one million to one point two million. The incrementals almost never work because it, it forces you to keep thinking in terms of incrementals. There's no big there's no big ideas. Right. Because I'm like, OK, we're doing a bill. We're doing a 10 million dollars a year. The economy is getting worse. So you got to sit down in a budget meeting. Everybody does this. Guys, we need to go from 10 million. Let's just do 10 million again because the economy's bad. You're never going to keep it. Flat lines always fall. Now, if the if the group, that, by the way, everybody, your average people that you, you guys talk to every day, um, they're all thinking the same way. So what you want to do is think outside that box and say, no, no, while they're going to flat line, what we're going to do is we're going to take our business from $1 million a year to 10 million. How could we do that? Well, we can't do it. Okay, but how could we do it? Uh, man, it's impossible. But how could we? Uh, well, we can't even find, dude, why don't you go buy 10 businesses like yourself right now? It would be easier to buy 10 businesses in a recession than it would be to grow your business. And you just grew 10 times and you didn't have to hire one person, but you got to think outside the box. So if you went back to having 5k in this day and age, yeah. what would you do with that? And how would you grow it? I'd get rid of it. Where? I would, I would invest it. All of it. I would go back to zero. So I got 5,000 in my bag right now. If it was my last 5,000, I'd give it to you guys and say, okay, hold this five grand for me. Where are you going? I'm broke again, bro. I'm gonna go do whatever got me that 5,000. I'm gonna double that 5,000 as fast as I can. 
I'm not going to build a product. I'm not going to create a product. I'm not nothing. I'm going to go ask 50 people for a hundred bucks is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to, he's my banker guy. He's the guy yeah, I trust to hold the money. Me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to give him now, boom, I got 10 grand. He's like, why you give me all this money? Cause I don't want the money, bro. Cause the money ain't making money. I'm making the money and I'm going to go hustle. Did you guys watch undercover, uh, undercover billionaire? Yeah. yeah Love that. I never had any money. They gave me money. I'm like, I don't want money. I don't need any money. I don't need a place to live. I don't need food. I don't need water, bro. I can hustle people. At what stage do you start using that money that you've um, grown to start then investing it into something else? When I, when I have some and when I have a place to put it, yeah, I need a place to put it. Where's it going to go? So I don't lose it. Mm. I don't lose money. You give me, you give me $5,000 and you come see me 15 years from now. If I could mark that five grand, I could show you that same 5,000 again. Mm. Now, I will lose the money the five grand earns. So once I invest the 5,000 and it pays me 50 bucks, that's what I spend. I never spend the first five. Like if your audience had one takeaway here, I never spend the money I earn ever, never. If, if, if he gives me a job and he pays me a hundred grand, I will never spend the first hundred. I will spend the earnings from the hundred. So if the earnings pay me 10,000, that's all I spend for rent, food, water, clothing, gifts, until I have enough money, until I have enough hundreds invested to improve the quality of my life, that's when I improve the quality of my life. I do not improve the quality of my life on earnings, but I'm unselfish. Yeah, I think too many people see that money from the paycheck as the cash rather than the tool to make the cash. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Changing the subject a little Here bit. Here we go. <laughs> that's what we as, do. It's as, a segue. Yeah. As a billionaire, how do you approach parenting? Uh, we homeschool our kids. Mm. So um, I, w I want my kids out of the school system. I, m I mentioned this earlier. It's a dangerous place. A lot of bullying going on. I don't know what it's like over there where you guys are, but fuck, they're teaching stuff now. God damn. I didn't even hear about some of this stuff until I was 35, 40 years old. Do you have a son? No. Do you think... Would you, would you like to be my son? Uh, yeah, I probably would, to be fair. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd yeah, rock with that. Let's, let's keep it real. Two girls, I have a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old. We've been homeschooling them for uh, eight years now. And everybody... The, the number one problem with homeschooling, right, is they're like, oh, your kids are not going to be socialized. Go check out Sabrina Cardone or Scarlett Cardone on the internet. Yeah. And you'll see that that is complete myth. My kids are so social, so confident. And they are social and confident... Be, for two reasons. One, we took them out of the school system and got them away from all your idiots. The average people. All, all your idiot kids. Fuck them. Okay. Okay. You can, the kids are crazy, man. Okay. They're confused. They're medicated. Uh, they're, they're cutting off their gentles. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, like doing all kinds of That's why I stuff. asked if you had a son. Yeah. Because I thought it would come back as a girl. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's weird. <laughs> right, right, right now, if he was going to school, he would. It, it, it's so confusing, yeah. man. And then you add the social social media on top of it. And kids are getting it. 10 years old, they're getting data. This crazy. I can barely handle it. So, number one, I would take them out of the schools. And number two, my uh, number two, the, both my kids did a communication school course. That communication course was written by a guy named L. Ron Hubbard, delivered by the Church of Scientology. You guys have one in London. Fantastic, unbelievable information for public speaking. My kids at eight years old spoke in front of 8,000 people, wrote their own speech, practiced their own speech. By the way, not me. I had nothing to do with it and delivered it to an audience uh, because of that one little simple free course online. What about like lifestyle and things like that? Because before I commit to being your son, I do need to know what it comes with. Like, do I get jet access? 100. You know, how, how does 100. it work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get access to the 650. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You're going to have a personal trainer come take care of you. Yeah, that'd be gonna, good. And you're not going to be saying, I, 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 can't, I don't want to eat no more. We're going to build some muscle on you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Step one. Uh, we're yeah. we're going to we're going to make you a great salesperson in the organization. Okay. You're going to leave these bums right here and you're going to come work with me. We're going to build something big, bro. Well, I can't. I, can't I believe leave, in you, bro. I can't leave my boys behind. Though. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm quickly interested. You mentioned Scientology there. Yeah. Could you explain a little bit more about the, the religion? Because I only know that the surface level stuff they, they put on the internet. Yeah. No, obviously, no, it's not the proper yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, so it's uh, unbelievable. I've been involved. Uh, uh, I, I was curious about it 25 years ago. Started doing courses there 20 years ago. Uh, I was just the short of it. I'm not a, I'm not a spokesman for the Church of Scientology, but I will tell you, everything I've read on the internet, the trashes that says bad stuff is completely not my experience. 
the courses there are so phenomenal. Unbelievable courses on parenting, courses on relationships, courses on how to be in a good, healthy relationship, uh, communication courses. This is not a dogma religion. Like you're not praying to something. You're learning through observation, okay, how to be a better communicator. When do you spend money? When don't you? Okay. You remember when I said the guy that comes to work for me and I want to hire him and he's overspending? I'm not hiring him. Okay. He's unethical. It is a degenerate. It is a problem in society that people spend money. It is an indicator. How to pick people out, how to pick the right friends or the right partners. Is he a degenerate? Yep. <laughs> no, so you're not. He's you, not. You used to be, he used but to you're be, a reformed used to be. Well, there you go. There you go. And by the way, I, I used to be a degenerate. Yeah. Okay? I do and still like I, to spend, though. Like, I don't just hoard my money. If I'm going out, I will spend. If yeah. I see something I want, I will buy it. Yeah. I don't just, okay. well, that, I don't that, do that, this that whole make, has to be passive that, income. You know, I do like to live. Yeah, that doesn't make... Whoa! <laughs> Shots <laughs> fired. Dig that. You don't have enough money to live yet. Okay? No, no, so no of course, for sure. Like, yeah, like, you're like, absolutely like, right. Like, there's all levels, right? Mm. So, so, but, but like how to pick the right people. Like I told you guys earlier, I've been ripped off one time in my 35 years. Why? Because there's a course on how to spot criminals and degenerates and, and people that make mistakes and cause problems. You guys have all been around somebody before that caused you problems in life. If you could have avoided them, you wouldn't have had. There's a, a course called the ups and downs course. You, you ever see people go rocky life, roller coaster, up and down? Dude, if you got rid of the downs, you'd have all ups. And that's possible for people. Anyway, those are the courses they teach there. It's not a dogma. It's how to actually become and apply practical solutions to life to make your life so, better. So wh why is it a religion then? Because you, unlike your average audience that you want to fuck over, okay? We no, said no, fuck them over. We never said fuck them over. <laughs> I'm really you did. Yeah. Yeah. We're playing, right? Yeah. But but that because if I if you improve yourself as a spiritual unit, okay, and start tapping into your potential that is not even known to you, yeah. Okay, that, that is a religious event. So the moment I can become, go from where I was when I was 20 years old, lost, confused, drug addict, and start building the business I have today, including taking care of my health and my family and my children and my marriage and my employees and having, like go through our company here, not just this building, but the one next door and you see healthy, happy people. Those are all extensions of a spiritual condition that I'm in. My material life should reflect my spiritual condition. A spiritual man that is broke has a broken link somewhere. Like I should be able to have, the word wealth comes from health. Mm. Okay, so originally, like if you go back 700, 700, 800 years ago, like a healthy person would be wealthy. And a wealthy per person would be health healthy as well, right? I wouldn't be a rich billionaire and divorce, kids or drugs, c people committing suicide, everything's broken around me. That, that, that That's an indication of some spiritual violation. So that's why it's a religion. Right, okay. Because the reason I ask is because I haven't, I don't know much about it. I'm pretty oblivious to it, but it sounds very interesting and I'm very intrigued mm -hmm. by it. Presumably you could be, for example, Muslim and yes. hold those. Can you be 100% both? Right. I've, I've been in church with a Muslim on the left of me, a Baptist on the right of me, a Jewish guy in front of me. Well, actually, right. Not, so you, you go into church. There, there, there's a, there's a mass one or there are a chaplain. Or right. What's it called? Uh, the Sunday, the Sunday. Yeah. But most of it is personal development. Okay. Where you are with what you need. Like, so it's not- He needs something different than you need, than you need, mm. than I need, than your dad needs. Everybody's got a different- So there's no hick, belief hiccup. systems about how the world was made or why no. we're here. Okay. That's up to you. Right. So you could meet you could meet 10 Scientologists that have different political views. Oh, cool. Different uh, interest in who they spend time with. Uh, you could One could be an artist and like money. One could be an artist and not like money. And one could be a businessman. There's a whole bunch. I know you guys know a bunch of TV and movie people that are Scientologists, but the big secret in Scientology, y'all want a big secret? Yeah, then. Always. The, the amount of business success of successful, big, tight con, like titan business people uh, that use that technology is, is, is a big secret. And if someone wants to get involved in this, how do they do that? Where do they get go this online, information? Go online, go to Scientology.org. 
and do an online course. That's what I did. Okay. I did a course online, loved it, made sense to me. What if someone wants to leave though? Because I've heard bad things about, you know, being trapped in the religion and maybe it's given percentage of things ridiculous. you own. This is completely ridiculous. So it is a simple process of just- You leaving. walk out the door. And you don't have any ties to them financially or anything like that? There's no tithing. Oh, there isn't? Okay. Zero tithing. It's completely okay. ridiculous. So, so there's somebody said, I've given all my money to the, to the church. Does it look like I've given all my money? How do they it's, operate? How, how do they get funded? Uh, it's charity. Right, okay. Yeah. So, Whatever you want to get. So for, in, for instance, like if I want to do a course mm. and a course is $65, that is a charitable donation to the church. Mm. In exchange for the donation, you do the course. Right, okay. Interesting. Or you can just give money to them if you mm. want to. But really, they'd rather help you get, you know, fix your life. Mm. So, but they're not involved in any wars. Okay, they don't, you know, medication is not a solution there. Uh, that, that they're not going to be like, oh, you need an antidepressant. They're not going to label you ADD or ADHD or bipolar. Or You guys ever been labeled any of that stuff? No. I was like dyslexic. Yeah, yeah. I, I, they'll teach you how to read, man. Dyslexia mm. is a, a condition caused by the inability to actually understand words. Mm. So I know a lot of people that went there with the issue of dyslexia, unable to read. And there's a course on how to study. And the course on how to study actually fixes your ability to understand words. Because if you can't understand words, bro, you can't move on this planet. Mm. Are there any courses about AI? And what do you think about um, AI? I love AI, man. I think AI is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're embracing it over here. Um, I just want to figure out how to, I'm not threatened by it. Um, I want to use it to, to, you like it, huh? Yeah. I can tell. Yeah, you, of course. You, you this, all, you, you, this got lit up. On yeah, it, I'm right? like, let's talk about AI because okay. as, as you're alluding to, it's going to change everything. And that's so exciting to me because it's a, it's a new field to learn and get immersed in. How are you seeing it play into your life? We, all, we already, you know, we already have it uh, using video content, uh, audio content. Um, I mean, I could become, Grant Cardone can become, mm. I could live for 10,000 years now. All those salespeople in there. Yeah. Can they be replaced those, those by are, AI? Those are coaches. And okay. Yeah, those are coaches. The salespeople are back. In so the your salespeople back there, can they be replaced by I AI? Would, I would it? never replace a real salesperson. I would provide him with support. So those 8,000, those 80,000 phone calls a month there will go to, you know, 800,000 phone calls. But what if the robot's just better at closing deals? I will always, I, so. Well, what's, they'll make more money then. What's no, I don't than, see that happening. What's no. better than one grant? Two. Exactly. Yeah, but then you can get a million rope, you can get a million AI things going off. So what's the point in the human that can only do one thousandth of the, the work? Why yeah, keep them? I, because because I'm going to be like, I'm going to be on the phone. Bro, is this real or is this AI? Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have an option. Uh, AI is fine for me. Good. I'm, an art, I'm, I'm ready to take an order. No, I want to talk to Tyler. I have a relationship with Tyler. Or maybe you're a weirdo and you're like, no, no, I want a relationship with AI and I like this. Okay. And he'll, whatever. Who, who knows where this AI is? Presumably go, there'll the be Tyler the AI and I don't even know I'm talking to an AI because it's that but good. But you may want to know. You may have a preference. People have preferences, man. Like some people just want to click and buy stuff and some people want to, I want to buy something online. Maybe I want to go to the store and have an experience with somebody and actually meet a human being. And the more, the more robot, the more, the more synthetic we become, the more there is actually a desire for real human contact. We saw that during COVID, mm. you know? And so, um, yeah, will there be a place for AI? I love it, man. Let's go. I'm ready to rock. We're already an AI society anyway. Your credit cards are processed, your banking's processed. This is not like some major shift. Would you get one of those chips in your implanted into your mind? I wouldn't do that, personally. Now, if, if I couldn't see and it could give me the ability to see or I couldn't hear and it could give me the ability to hear or I couldn't, you know, I've lost some God-given thing and that could restore that. Like, I try to stay away from doctors, but if my arm was cut off and you could give me an extension that had fingers, I'd go grab it right away, man. You know, if I get in a car wreck and I'm in a bunch of pain, it can hit me with some morphine, but I'm not going to drugs is my first choice. Mm. Would you be more likely to hire someone with a chip in their brain though? Because obviously they will be able to, you know, think faster, do the task better than someone without this chip in their brain. Like it it, 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 it depends. So the problem though with the chip in the brain is the chip mm. in the brain can be turned off. You know, like I would rather have cars that don't have chips in them, frankly. 
because mm. I'm worried about somebody hitting a button and I, and I, and I can't start my car. Yeah, fuck now, Tesla. Fuck yeah, Tesla. Yeah, I, I, I'm not big. I, no, I, I, I did put- I <laughs> Shit did. cars. <laughs> you think so? He, he's saying that because I've got a Tesla. Oh, yeah. so I, I, I ordered the truck. I just ordered yeah, the, the cyber, cyber truck. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I think they're good. But I would, uh, I'd be more interested in learning how do I turn people on that work for me? How do I turn their chip on? Because look, let's face it. We're already programmed. You know, how do I get deprogrammed so that I have my own software running in me and then I can think for myself, make decisions for myself, go where I want, create the dreams I want, the family I want, and have an imagination like rather than just being fed what everybody wants me to believe. Because I truly believe that we already have uh, everything we need to become unbelievable. What um, legacy do you want to leave on this world? Man, I just want, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm just trying to make a difference. I'm trying to help whoever will let me help them. I'm not trying to, somebody said once, oh, you said you wanted to help 8 billion people. I didn't say that because I can't help 8 billion people. 8 billion people w would not even accept my help if I could get to know them all. Mm -hmm. So there's some people that just have too much hate in their heart. You can't help them. You got people that have just quit. I can't help them. You got a guy that's too medicated. He can't be helped. Sorry. You're medicated, bro. You're a drug pro you got a drug problem, whether it's prescribed or not. Yeah, you're 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 beyond help. You know, it and you don't like me. Okay, I can't help you. Like there's a like list of people I can't help, mostly because they don't know me. So now for the small people, group of people that allow me to help them, I want them to be able to say, dude, I had a good time with that cat. The guy was funny. He actually looked at everybody because I was interested in everybody. I'm not, in, I'm not worried about how I'm perceived here. Right. And then he, and he helped me, man. I, t I did something and it helped me. Like I would like to live longer than my dad did. Right. And, and the beautiful thing today is that technology, I don't mean physically live longer. I mean that like you could live longer. You know, I would like to pay people my, I mean, a dream of mine is that I would pay people money. I would send people money every month to an account uh, for the next, 50 years. Uh, last month, we sent out $5 million, $5.5 million in cash. Last month, $50 million this year. Every month, I send money out. When I was 30, 30 years old, I couldn't wait to make $5 million. Now I'm sending $5 million out. So that, that's, a, that's a shift in legacy, right? Mm -hmm. I was a sales guy worried about my own bag. Now I'm trying to figure out how do I help people with their bag and their funding? Would you advise people to like you just alluded to there, put themselves first, get themselves mm -hmm. set, almost like, you know, when you put your own mask on on the airplane before yeah. doing your kids. Yeah. Is that what you'd advise people to do? One, yeah, I'd be very selfish. Yeah. I would advise people be extremely selfish in the beginning about your money, your finances, your self-improvement before you start trying to like build a, a network. And that money that you send out every, every month, where does that go? Who does that go to? And we have 13,000 investors that get sent that money, but that, that, that grow, our goal is to have a million people on that we're sending money to every month. So, um, we do that distribution monthly. We were told not to do it every quarter. It's too expensive to do it every month. I said, I want to do it every month. Why? Cause people need money every month. Your bills are due every month. So we set it up the right way, not a, a, a better, more economical way. And like literally I have an entire department every 30 days, all they're doing is, Okay, we're ready for distribution. Boom, they send the money out the next day. Okay, we're already preparing for next month's distributions. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Yeah, hey, thanks, thank, you, thank you guys for coming down. Welcome to America, man. How do y'all like it? What's your, what's we your love it? We, we love, love it in uh, Miami way better than LA. We yeah. think LA's just gone to shit. Really. Yeah, I didn't like it, America yeah, yeah. at all, but yeah. now that I've come to Miami, it's growing on me for yeah. sure. Well, you're welcome back anytime and, thank and you. I appreciate you coming in and, and good luck with the show. and. Uh, appreciate you guys being interested in success and, and taking interest in my story. Thank, Thank you. you. Where can Thank people you. find you as well? Grant Cardone. Just Grant Cardone yeah. everywhere. I'm everywhere. <laughs> That's easy, man. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. And we will see you next Wednesday with a brand new podcast. See you later. See ya. Thanks, guys. Thank you. That was, yeah, great. That was fun. That was fun, guys. Very good. Thanks, for, thanks for letting me have fun with it, too.